other interesting political news, you had the UAW president, Sean Fain, under federal investigation. Possible corruption in unions? Who would have thunk it? Oh, yes. Wait a minute. They've been corrupt for decades and decades and decades. Now, this is first brought to us thanks to CNBC, and they say, quote, the United Auto Workers President Sean Fain is under investigation by a federal court-appointed watchdog. The moderate Neil Brogowski is investigating whether Fain abused his power as union president, potentially violating a 2020 consent decree between the UAW and the United States Department of Justice. The union is in the middle of the nation organizing a drive around non-union automakers, also known as billing automakers, and increasing the cost of goods sold for all the consumers while simultaneously decreasing the quality. And again, I've had family members who have worked union in terms of frontline assembly, as well as families who have worked in management. I mean, kind of de facto, if you grew up in the Midwest, you have family in Michigan. And yeah, I've seen, again, I've seen a lot of ineptitudes on both sides of the equation. In terms of unions, I've seen all getting paid a lot of money to do relatively very little work. Again, not all people in unions are like that, understand? But yeah, let's just say the union leaders get paid a lot of money. Uh, and Sean Fain was like $300,000. And yeah, Sean Fain's right hand man is a self proclaimed Marxist, and Bernie Sanders is very closely with working with Sean Fain, which to me tells you everything you need to know about this mentally, morally vacuous individual. Because again, the ideology of communism is the most evil thing on the planet, and why everyone leaves those countries. But nevertheless, go back to a couple of bullet points here. They say, that, quote, oh, sorry here, lost that. Such actions could potentially violate a 2020 degree. Now they say, sorry, give me the specific quote. The monitor has attempted for months to garner the union's cooperation in gathering information needed to conduct a full investigation, but the union has effectively slow rolled the monitor's access to requested documents. This according to court filing. More recently, the filing says that the monitor expanded the investigation to include additional allegations of retaliation by Sean Fain against one of the union's vice presidents. The monitor also opened an unrelated investigation into another unnamed UAW International Executive Board, or IEP member, Regional director after receiving allegations of potential embezzlement, according to the filing. The UAW embezzling money? No. No. Ha, huh, it's a joke because, yeah, they do. Now, they say, quote, without specifically addressing any of the issues in the filing, Fain released a statement Monday night saying, quote, taking our nation in new directions means something sometimes you have to rock the boat, and that upsets some people who want to keep the status quo. Our membership expects better and deserves better than the old business model, as usual, unquote. Sounds like the old adage got cracked a couple of eggs. Sometimes he's got to bribe some folks. Yeah, he says, quote, We encourage the monitor to investigate whether the claims brought forth to the office because we know that what they'll find. A UAW leadership committee is serving the membership and running a democratic union. We're staying focused on winning record contracts, growing our nation, and fighting for economical and social, uh, social injustice on and off the job, unquote. A little brain fart. I said, I said socialist, which, well, that's what he is, but that's not what he specifically articulated in that quote. Even though he's self-proclaimed, yeah. Um, now they say that, quote, the union is in the middle of nationwide organizing a drive of non-union automakers. The accusations follow Sean's raise of international prominence after the union, under his leadership, got record contracts from GM, Ford, and Stellantis, making them yet more non-competitive. I had to that last part, of course. Now they say that the probe stems from the union leaders removing all responsibilities assigned to Secretary Treasurer Margaret Mock and that are not constitutionally required amid allegations she engaged in misconduct while carrying out her financial oversight responsibilities. They also noted that, quote, in response, the filing says that Mock lodged allegations of her own against the union's president that, among other things, the charges were against her were false and that removal of her authority was improperly instigated in retaliation for her refusal or reluctance to authorize certain expenditures, aka spending money they probably shouldn't have. Let's see here. Go down more and more. They say the following states that more than three months after the monitor's initial, initial document request, the union has produced a very small portion, approximately 2,600 documents, of the currently potentially relevant to pool of approximately 116,000 documents, with more than 80% of those documents only being produced June 6, 2024, days before the issuance of the report. Now, again, these are all allegations. So it'll be interesting to see you know, what is actually brought forth at the end of the day. Definitely not good news for the UAW, which is getting more and more critique for, again, making the most expensive, most iron reliable vehicles in the industry. And the most hilariously ironic, and it's a little heartbreaking, because, again, there are good people who work in unions. I know some folks. And at the same time, the union spends millions upon millions of dollars electing politicians like Biden who are making the most profitable items that they make 
illegal, aka de facto bans of internal combustion engines, and they're forcing the unions to make vehicles like EVs, which inherently require less rudimentary labor and are going to be basically computers on wheels. There's going to be a lot less overall jobs, I should say, in terms of labor jobs for the manufacturer assembly um, in support of EVs versus the traditional internal combustion engine, which again, these companies, I mean, they were doing pretty good for a long time. Now, not so much. And I'm not sure how many of them are going to make it to the EV transition. I mean, GM has gone bankrupt three times since they started the company when Billy Durant combined Buick and Oldsmobile all those years ago. And yet, the quality keeps going down, the price keeps going up, the competition is fierce. I mean, Toyota is the largest automotive company on the planet for a reason. Granted, they've had some you know business blunders lately with reliability, so their even their reputation is kind of being chiseled away. When it comes to EVs, China's on the rise, having the cheapest price point. Granted, the U.S. is going to try to futilely you know, fight them back with the tariffs, but they're going to make them in Mexico to avoid that. When it comes to the UAW, it's one of those things where it'll be interesting to see what's proven at the end of the day. And does it, well, it certainly doesn't help the perception of the UAW. I mean, the perception of the unions, from, and again, there are some good peoples on both sides. It's already not a great perception. The average person, I did, again, small pool sample, but I did a little poll on LinkedIn asking like people, hey, do you support unions these days? Yeah, now the 252 people who did vote, about 68% said no. Now, again, that is a very small sample size. Most of my connections are in Texas, so and most of them are, I would say, on average are in tech jobs. So again, there are a lot of variables, and I was just saying it's a perfect poll. But, I mean, fewer and fewer people are supporting unions, and they are eliminating a lot of jobs at the end of the day with their increased cost and making these companies even more actively competitive. Now, will this become a business blunder, or perhaps a political blunder for Sean Fain? What's proven at the end of the day? And will unionship grow under his tenure and what are things going to look like? Could it lead to another possible bankruptcy like in 2009 when, again, GM as well as Chrysler both went bankrupt? Let me know in the comments. And again, they're one of the most, I always have them in the politics book because, again, they're one of the most biggest influential political contributors, both basically as well as endorsed Biden officially. So, not all. Again, I know some people in the news who hate Biden, they disdain him, partially for the reasons that I subsequently said. But it'll be interesting to see what the overall impact is on the upcoming election and does it sway people one way or the other. Let me know in the comments, especially if you're part of the union, either man or if you're part of the management of a manufacturer. Or someone working the front lines, what's your opinion of Sean Fain? Do you think he's doing overall good for it? He, again, he did increase the cost of goods sold. Okay, he did good in terms of increasing the overall dollar amounts to the unions. Also, one of the reasons they're outsourcing more jobs, from the management perspective at the manufacturers. But let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, try to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback. Letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.